course, first, it is going to be Chonsu up against Tyler, which is one that I'm very, very excited for. Because Chonsu, uh, I think he ended up being the single best performing Grandmaster across all regions at the end, at the very least tied, I think. Mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, I think, very well deserved. He was playing some very, very strong Hearthstone week after week after week. Yeah, and funnily enough, I'm j I was just glancing. I wasn't being rude, by the way, to anyone watching. I was just glancing through the lists. Okay, uh, I'll take it. Um, and Chonsu's lineup is quite different to the players we've seen so mm. far. Uh, he does have Combo Priest, as does most of the field. He does have the Holy Wrath Paladin, but he has the Highlander Hunter and then the Quest Shaman, but with the Hairs and Evolve uh, in there as well. And I think, for me at least, this is the lineup that I th was expecting the most. Okay. Because I think Hunter has some good game if you presume everyone's going to play Paladin, even versus Priest. It's not been too bad mm. as well. And then this Shaman is probably the, the list I would have lent to as it has the benefits of being, oh, well, you know, it's still Quest Shaman. It still does right. more or less the same things. You know how to play it, but it has some, you know, bigger power spike turns. So I think Chansu with this list uh, or this uh, set of lists would have been what I would have fell on. Yeah, the Quest Shaman versus Token Shaman is a really interesting debate that I think uh, really depends on what, quite obviously, you're expecting to see from your yeah. opponents. Because if you're expecting a lot of combo pre still, I definitely lean towards the Token version, the Overload version, uh, with the Lickums, the Lightning Bolts, right. the Thunderheads, all that good stuff. Uh, I think for uh, Quest Shaman, even with the addition of Evolve and, of course, Desert Hair, it's still a bit of a tough matchup against Priest because you still lack that removal, most yes. importantly, to be killing off their stuff, even though you can be a little bit more proactive. Uh, but I do love the list of t uh, Quest Shaman that he's gone for. I think it's pretty much mandatory that you include Evolve in your Shaman decks at the moment, unless you're going for a uh, super control version control of the deck, maybe. Sure. But even then, I think it's just such a devastatingly strong card. Uh, but I know that you uh, are personally, this week, I think quite a big fan of Highlander Hunter uh, because of the deck representation from a lot of the other players. Yeah, I think so. I, th I think, like, H Hunter does well versus Paladin. I think everyone just jumped to Paladin as such a, uh, a good deck to play and it's pretty straightforward in terms of deck building. Yeah. You just, well, most players have took, like, a Thakal out and put Emperor Thorison in. That's it. That's the whole deck. Uh, whereas Highla uh, Highlander Hunter, although hasn't gained anything that's like truly mind blowing, yeah. it's gained Call of the Wild. But I just think the deck in general is putting a lot of pressure on decks that seem a little bit slower. It might still not be so good against, uh, say, the Shamans of the world because you might get swamped down a little bit too early. Yeah. But again, I think like the secrets do pretty well. I I expected to see more Warrior, in which I again thought the Hunter would do well versus. Yeah. Uh, we've not got seen that much Warrior submitted so far. So yeah, I think Hunter was going to be pretty good, and you know the inclusion of Ragnaros and Call of the Wild in most lists is just the extra late game punch that even. Before they had that Hunters were winning some of the slow matchups, but now with those cards, it's just extra juice to really push. It can just be insane. If you're going for the curve of like Savannah High Main into Bran into Ragnaros, like what can beat that? What can possibly beat that? It is yeah. it's not especially powerful in the early game, I agree. It's generally just secrets on curve, maybe a hyena alpha, which is Strong, good. don't get me wrong, but it's no Mogu Mutate on turn three or four that we're seeing from the Shaman decks. But I agree, the late game stuff that it can do, especially with Call of the Wild after all of that into Zul'jin, that is game-breaking stuff. It really is, because it's also when you start adding in the Still Unleash the Beast, so then when you play Zul'jin, you have Call of the Wild Unleash Unleash potentially, <laughs> which means that it's yeah. not just like a board of 5-5 five, five rushes. You've got Taunt, you've got you know an AoE damage buff, and you've got Huffer as well to push some instant damage. And you can like triple trade that turn if yeah. you really wanted to. And that's without including Deadly Shot and so on. Uh, Apologize. I know this has turned into some talk stone for you guys. But I think we're waiting on Chansu. Because Tyler was ready because he was... He literally just played a match. So I assume he's knocking around. I just don't know where Chansu is right now. Yeah, we'll have to wait Tied for these players to, to find out where they are. But it's interesting to talk a little bit about, uh, again, where Tyler is at the moment and the, the practice process that went through picking out their decks. Because, again, he is with a bunch of the other GMs, European and Americas, as well as him on the Asia-Pacific side. And they went through quite a lot of testing, it feels like, before they were able to come up with their lineup of this uh, token shaman. Right. And I think they could very easily have gone in a completely different direction because... A lot of those players have wildly different ideas. Maybe there was just the right amount of them to keep each other in check. Maybe, Maybe there was like a buddy <laughs> system where they were like, look, okay, Orange, you're with Casper. Yeah. Don't let him bring up any crazy ideas. Friends don't let friends bring mage. There you go. <laughs> um, unfortunately, uh, we're still just tracking down the players and making sure they're ready for the match. We're just going to go to a quick break while we uh, find out where they are and make sure they are prepared. So we'll be right back with some more Grandmasters. 
네, 안녕하세요. 김천수입니다. 지금 블랜드 마스터 리그에서 활동하고 있어요. 하스톤 경기할 때는 제가 최대한 침착하게 하려고 노력하는데요. 그때 도움되는 게물 많이 마시는 거. 물 많이 마시는 게 저한테 꿀팁이라고 할수 있을 것 같아요. 그 저번 시즌에 그 꼴등을 아쉽게 꼴등을 해가지고 이번 시즌에 그 괜찮게 성적 나와가지고 블리즈컨 갈수 있으면 정말 기분 좋을 것 같아요. 가면은 저번에 한번 갔었을 때처럼 여행도 많이 해보고 싶어요. 하스스톤 카드 중 하나 되고 싶다고 하면 은 저는 데스윙? 데스윙 되고 싶어요. 데스윙 일단 되게 멋있고 그 게임을 한꺼번에 바로 뒤집는 카드잖아요. 그것처럼 저도 그게 되고 싶어요. 일단 저는 그 리그를 할때 최대한 그 자신감을 잃지 않으려고 노력은 하는 편인데 이번에 꼴등을 하면서 정말 생각지도 못했거든요. 제가 꼴등 하는 거를 그래서 약간 꺾이긴 했어요. 근데 그래도 다음 시즌에는 더 일단 더 내려갈 곳은 없는 거니까 그거를 생각해가지고 약간 노력해 볼 생각입니다. 저번 시즌에 좀안 좋은 성적을 보였는데 이게 제가 노력을 아주 열심히 하진 않은 것 같긴 해요. 그래서 이번에는 진짜로 진짜로 풀 충전해가지고 해보려고 할, 생, 할 생각입니다. 파이팅! Not so fast, Riff Raff. The treasure is mine. That's what you think, but I'll have to decline. Your endless prattling fills me with gloom. It's time you both met your doom in the tomb! <laughs> Now I'll unleash these powers most wild. Old Terra's return, no longer exile. No rhymes can bring me grief. Not I, the world's greatest thief. Onwards for glory and things to explore. You are too late, dear heroes. The horseman is here. It's Hallow's end, and the dark night draws near. This horseman seems so medieval. I'll have to show him true evil. You cannot win with a plan so feeble. The explorers won't let you. You weevil. Oh. The night is still young, so let us proceed. You'll be no match for my trusty death steeds. Round and round your minions will spin. Don't lose your head, and you just might win. <laughs> On Hallow's End, great powers are mine. In the arena, two classes now combine. You'll need more than that to defeat us this night. So pick your bundle and prepare for a fight. Cast a hex! Defeat with a flex! If that's not enough, then play another round. Quests earn rewards and challenges abound. Once the sun rises, my terrible night is done. Good luck, heroes. I hope you have fun. Did he call me a hero? I think he said zero. Oh, yes. 안녕하세요. 저는 SKT T1에서 활동하고 있는 프로 게이머 서렌더 김정수라고 합니다. 어, 하스스톤 카드 중에서 하나가 될수 있다면 이번에 나온 제피로스 카드가 되고 싶어요. 제피로스 카드처럼 상황에 맞게 뭐든지 다할수 있는 그런 능력을 가질 수 있었으면 좋겠습니다. 어, 이번에 새로 나온 카드 중에서 저평가된 카드는요. 공룡조련사 브란이 되게 저평가된 것 같아요. 실제로 제가 대회에서 방금 몇번 당하고 왔는데 되게 7턴에 칼로 넣으면 되게 부담이 크더라고요. 어, 시즌1에서는 우승을 거뒀기 때문에 일단 저는 제 성적에 만족하고 있고요. 그리고 시즌2에서도 좋은 성적을 거둘 수 있도록 노력해 보겠습니다. 음, 지금 디비전이 좀 부담스러운 게 한국 선수분들이 저 빼고도 세 분이나 있거든요. 그래서 한국 선수들 상대로 게임하는 건 항상 좀 부담스럽고 음, 다들 잘하시는 선수라서 선수들이라서 조금 힘들 것 같고요. 그렇지만 그럼에도 불구하고 이미 한국 선수분들 상대로 좋은 성적을 거둔 바가 있기 때문에 열심히 하도록 하겠습니다. PNC 선수랑 피노 선수 둘다 저랑 되게 친한 선수들이고 그리고 되게 잘하는 선수들인데 
제가 알기로 PNC 선수랑은 블리지컨에 가게 되면 은 같은 그룹에 속해 있는 걸로 알고 있거든요. 그래서 조금 걱정되긴 하지만 은 그래도 자신 있네요. 어, 제가 하스스톤을 시작하기 전에 고등학교 다닐 때만 해도 꿈은 교사가 되는 게 꿈이었거든요. 그래서 아마 제 나이쯤 되면 이제 대학 졸업하고 막 음, 이제 막 졸업하고 네, 교사가 되는, 되지 않았을까 싶습니다. 어, 그랜드마스터 시청해주시는 시청자분들 다들 감사드리고 앞으로도 좀더 좋은 모습 보여드릴 수 있도록 하겠습니다. We are back and we're going to be moving on to the upper bracket uh, matchup from the group, which is going to be Chonsu versus Tyler. Tyler just taking a victory over Glory there. And uh, yeah, we are going to be moving on. The, the winner of this one is going to be going to the semi-finals, which will be played out on Sunday. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have the second group play out in the exact same format of today. Yeah, we're going to be seeing on that day uh, the other side. It's a mix of Division A and B, but Surrender Dawn, Tom60229 and Shaxi on the other side. I'm not sure which side I'd call the, uh, the the group of death there. I think you could make the argument, of course, uh, for Tom and Surrender in any group together is right. a pretty scary thing. Yep, and we can see what the players are bringing here. There's going to be the Paladin, Quest, Shaman, and Hunter, as we discussed before the break, uh, for Chansu. Uh, and a lineup I really like, and just a note as well, Chansu wasn't missing. They were doing the picks and bands, obviously, because they can only do that uh, when the match is finished. Yep. But obviously, Tyler just finishing a match delays it just a tad. Uh, so we'll get that sorted going forward. Don't you guys worry. You don't have to hear talk stone from me and Derek uh, that much more today. But... This lineup I do like overall. Um, again, I think the Hunter's well positioned here, and I do think we are going to see Hunter versus Priest as our first matchup. Uh, Tyler going to be on the Priest and Chansu on the Hunter. And I think if this is a win here, he could be looking to be pretty good because if he can queue the Hunter and the Paladin into Priest, I think Chansu's got to be having a decent chance. Yeah, I think he could be in with a pretty good shot. It feels like... Uh Obviously, with Tyler shielding the priest, he has to have some contingency plan for it. You'd have to imagine, because I think into pretty much any lineup, Tyler will be happy to cue the priest. As right. we can see, a pretty strong trend with him both shielding and banning priest both times in the two series that he has played thus far today. Potentially, even in the third series, we'll play him in if he loses this right. one and uh, has to play against the winner of Alu Timu versus Glory. But for the most part, I think the strategy for Tyler is pretty self-explanatory, like we said, with the priests all out. Whereas uh, Chonsu on the other side going with shielding uh, the Shaman and banning Druid on the other side clearly doesn't fancy, I guess, uh, his... Uh, Hunter into the Druid, perhaps? Maybe just thinks the overall power level is so much higher. Or his Paladin. 
yeah, maybe his Paladin as well. I guess that's a good point. Not a good matchup there. Whereas against the uh, Shaman, it's maybe a little bit more reasonable if you can clear the board early on. Uh, that's the thing, honestly, as well. Like, if, if you if you see the way Druid is at the moment, then are you really super comfortable, especially with Hunter getting a bit slower mm. because of the added late game threats? Uh, do you real fe really feel more comfortable versus a Druid or a Priest right now? Mm. Honestly, I think it's very easy to say, well, obviously Druid because Priest is insane. But Hunter has good game versus priest in general whereas hunter versus druid normally relied on them kind of running away with the show early game yeah and if that's reduced a little bit then that's just factually harder and druid can heal for so much yeah. it just takes hunter out of the game and then again with the paladin paladin has game versus priest does it have much game versus druid well it doesn't really look like it in all extents right because of the sheer level of armor gain it can get so uh, i i think i think Chansu's, it's fine. i think chansu on the yeah. right line even though i'm normally a fan of just shield priest all the time yes uh, and i think uh, even if you compare the shaman to the druid which is the other real thing i think he would consider going for the ban on uh, i think at least with the the previous iteration before we saw evolve and desert hairs added in kind of token if uh token aggressive shamans were very poor against holy wrath paladin because you just struggle at getting enough stuff on board before they clear it off every turn yeah especially with timeout big time they just play timeout okay put more stuff on can't the board. do anything Perfect. yeah yeah but so far, though, with Tyler on the bottom versus Chansu on the top. Chansu, best scoring player in Asia Pacific Season 2. Tyler's kicking off with a Cleric, though. Not half bad. Yeah, it's just a pretty reasonable start overall. Uh, he's thinking about what can go wrong here? What can go wrong? What's the secret? Why is he coining it out there? The answer is pretty much always Sun Reaver Spy. There's not really any situation right. I think where you'd want to go coin secret. Uh, and therefore, Tyler's thinking he probably wants one that's difficult to prog, and therefore it's probably not snipe. So he can get away quite easily here with playing the Pyromancer. Uh, and I think it's right. There's not really much that can answer it on two anyway. It's pretty much exactly double spring pour that could get the answer there. Or um, Zephyrus backstab. And yeah. if they're going Zephyrus backstab, I think you're quite happy. And on the other hand as well, for Chansu is, even with this sort of preemptive response from Tyler, yeah. Chansu's still got a 3-4, and Tyler does not, which means that, depending on how the rest of his turn looks, he could struggle a little bit. Gonna go power shield if this is, yep, this is pressure play. Ooh. Ouch. That would have looked just as bad, I think, no matter what happened. If it killed the Pyro, then he couldn't have traded. Or I guess he could have inner fire traded. So I feel, circle. I feel like this turn was wrong from Tyler. Uh, like, if he's going to attack face with the Cleric because he wants to test for Freezing Trap and Explosive Trap, of course, in that end why don't you not attack with the Pyromancer? Because the, the three damage to face, I think, is near inconsequential, at least in the early game when you're trying to play around secrets and stuff. So accept that Pressure Plate could kill your Pyromancer before you attack, because if it kills off your Cleric, then you get to kill off this Sun Reaver Spy, which is... Quite a big difference, I think, actually. Because if he has some kind of answer here to your Pyromancer, like Eagle Horn Bow or Kill Command, then this could just be hitting you in the face for like four or five turns to come. And also just have initiative on any minion you play there for you the rest go. of the game, which is very scary. In the meantime, though, Chansu did decide to trade, properly the rare, play the Freezing Trap, and now the Psycho Pump off the top actually gives Tyler a little bit of a life here. I really like the hyena. I think. There can't be an expectation that Tyler can play tons of spells this turn, keep his uh, pyro alive, and clear the board. Wow, You've back got to, to play back it. draws. You just got to. Do you swing with this pyro? Can you afford not to? Why would you? To kill. Do you not want to just start with a spell? Yeah, I want to start with a spell. Because you've seen it's not. Uh, you've already seen the pressure play. I thought you were saying you should play the Amit. Oh, sorry, sorry. I don't know why I'm apologizing. I think it's rather presumptuous of you. He did draw it and say, you always play this. Did I? I think so. It's an automatic response at this point with Priest. I've gotten so <laughs> used to casting it. Hey, though. Again, the secret, which unfortunately we're not displaying right now on the uh, screen for you guys. Apologies, but it is freezing trap. Yeah.
Another secret draw now for Chonsu. This only draws two cards now at this point, I think, right? Yeah. Probably. Luckily for him, he's playing the full six, uh, uh, six secret package rather than just the more usual five. Yeah, Chonsu's looking good here. He is looking pretty good. Now, obviously, um, loses its reborn when it's bounced as well, yeah. since it's an added effect. Which means that Tyler just has a bad minion in hand now. And already, how is he even supposed to come back? So what happens if he goes Amit into uh, Wild Pyromancer? On board, neither can be cleared off. Uh, he obviously has to expect, I think, that Amit will be, at the very least, reduced down to one health and much more likely be killed off. Yeah. But the, the alternative is pass a turn and then go... Amit plus Beaming Sidekick plus Wild Pyromancer next turn. But then you have to remember, he's just drawn every secret in his deck, so he's pretty likely to play Rat Trap on the on the following turn. Uh, yeah, sure, Snipe, exactly, something else like that. In which case, your board is much less likely to stick because of the Snipe and the Rat Trap that could come down from Chonsu. Oh. Oh. And it's one of those games that just seems to slip out of your fingers out of nowhere. But I think it really does go back to that first turn on turn three for Tyler, where he was starting to play around secrets there. And I just think there were things he could have done to optimize that to increase his chances of sticking aboard. Yep, and there's a snipe. There is circle. But the problem is that means there's a rat. That's the thing. He could just circle, heal his face, and then pass. Or do this, uh, heal face and then pass. Because I think, honestly, he has to know there will be a rat trap. There's no way that And Chansu that means the ammo is 100% dead. Yes. Yeah. I'm on board. You'll find me wherever the action is. Uh, but yep. that is definitely not so what you want to see. So is King Crush. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I don't think there's a way out here for Tyler. You have best <laughs> there we go. It's a concede, and it's um, and oh, don't know what's going on there. And uh, and and as I said as well, the 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 matchups that are available for Chonto, I feel, are really good. There's the Hunter, uh, which you know, yes, it had a good game there versus Priest, but it's not the first time we've seen Hunter do well versus Priest at all. Yeah. It uh, you know, it has the secrets, it has the ability to kind of mess with those early turns. And as soon as the secret gets uh, the secrets get cooking, it means that Priest is always in a rough spot until they can sort of, you know, re remove the, the secret factor from the game. But with Subject 9 being drawn and being able to be safely played, it means that Tyler wouldn't have been surprised that it was like Snipe into Rat Trap because those were the two best follow-up secrets that could be played. So I think that's going to be uh, that's a good win there for Chansu. And if now he has, you know, his Paladin to take a win with, I think he's looking very, very favorable in this series. Yeah, I think he's looking to be in a perfectly good spot. Like you said, uh, the Paladin there should be in a fantastic spot for him because uh, Tyler on the other side, I think he has, uh, honestly... Sorry, a couple of pretty reasonable, uh, a couple of pretty poor matchups actually, uh, with the shaman. And I think even to an extent, you can argue the priest as well is not great up against the uh, OTK paladin. Uh, whereas uh, the paladin mirror is, of course, a, a different beast entirely. Is, is what it is, but I believe that Chansu is actually going to be queuing the quest shaman uh, up against Tyler's priest once again. It's not what so you want to see. We'll have to see that how that works out. Although honestly, again, not really had all the time in the world to play all these <laughs> matchups. Yeah. But with que Quest Shaman can get there sometimes, and then if you add an Evolve into that, maybe the plan is to just try and land a Hair Evolve or something yeah. Evolve early enough that, although it might not be game winning, can go toe to toe with the Priest minions at least for the f couple of turns. And then if you can keep the minions, you know, either off the board or at least just low health for a couple of turns, maybe some other cards like Weaponized Wasp, for example, can do some extra damage to actually clear the board off. Yeah, I think it really does uh, improve the chances up against Priest. Because if you think back to the times when Shaman would beat Priest, the quest Shaman, sometimes it was through going for a uh, Plague of Murlocs that was teched right. into the deck. Occasionally that worked. But the vast majority of the time, it was Moku Flesh Shaper plus Mutate. Or it was just getting down the uh, Questing Explorer, Questing Explorer, 4-drop, 5-drop. You curve up beautifully, and they just can't beat you on board. 
Uh, whereas now, of course, you not only have Mogu and Mutate, you have Evolve itself, the original upgrading card, and the uh, the hairs as well, which can be absolutely insane. Yeah, and already Chunsu not off to a terrible start, getting that evil totem down. Means that he can start generating lackeys that can maybe fight back on the board. Tyler, on the other hand, does have access to his North Shire Cleric, along with a Power Word Shield and, of course, the coin. It's kind of a weird spot for Tyler, of course, because one of the things you have to consider in situations like this is once you play Amet, it all of a sudden becomes very diff sorry, difficult to play around mind control tech because none of your minions die. They all have <laughs> such high health, which seems like a uh, uh, not the worst problem to have, which I would definitely agree with. But it's definitely something to consider, which is one of the reasons why I think Tyler is leaning towards this line of play, which delays Amet for an entire turn. Yeah, and also just gives him the most flexibility going forward as well. Although it sounds weird, like using the coin gives you flexibility, but yeah. I think this is just good because it's very likely you can get heal off and some extra card draw next turn. The powered shield is always going to be good. The circle of healing, hey, <laughs> even better. <laughs> That's the draw. That is what Tyler is looking for here. This is absurd. He could like go bump with the Northshire first, uh, but I guess that then makes it a little bit more. He wants to, to trade, use it to trade off. Right? Yeah, yeah. This seems better to me. Yep, I'm on board. Yep, damages all four minions, gets the full suite of draw. Chonsu knows precisely what's going on here. And I do wonder whether Chonsu should have even considered queuing the Shaman or not, because I feel like his pal did. That's what I was going to say. Matchups overall. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. I brought it up first. You did. I win. Is this lethal? It honestly might be getting close. It's like another. Pl no, not yet, not yet. If he goes like topsy, right? no. Okay. But yes, if he goes for the trade here first, then he's only overdrawing one, as opposed to two. So yeah, I would take two less damage. Because Chonsu obviously needs a way 100% to answer this Light Warden on this turn, or the game simply finishes on the spot. And even if he can, to be perfectly honest, I think this one may have slipped out of his fingers. Looks like an ethereal lucky to me. Same here. From nothing. Power. Well, that'll do it. Voltaic Burst does keep him up. So we could see Voltaic Burst ra uh, and rush one of them in, and then Titanic Lackey, lackey plus Evolve. Or then evolve then Titanic Lackey if you'd rather have oh, the taunt. I was thinking hmm. Titanic Lackey tra double trade into the cleric. Oh, okay. And then evolve. So you have it's two. It's bold. It, yeah. it, it, it's small, but it means that there's only the pyro on the board. You need something to go oh. right. Yeah. Um, Just taunting him. Just taunting. Oh, no, wait, sorry. That one's taunting him. Is this... N I mean, with 10 cards in hand, there has to be a way to find lethal on this turn, right? I guess not. So there's not. two health gains, three health gains, so two, four, six, seven... Maybe if he hadn't have burnt that silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, power shield. There's no way you can do a triple spell on this turn unless he draws into something else. If he was to get Divine well, Spirit, I think he could be looking trades the 3-3? Three, three, plays Amit. And then plays power shield and then just starts drawing. Because does he ever get... He gets it, doesn't he? If he plays... Uh, uh, no, it wouldn't Ooh. quite be there, actually. Because the pyro damage. This basically says, if you don't clear Amit, the you game die. the game just ends. It, it's just over. So I think this is perfectly fine. Because the thing is, Chonsu, in all likelihood, will just simply not be able to clear this up. I'm not even sure if there's a single way he could in the deck. Nope. He's going to continue it playing just, out. It maybe he gets a bowl off the top. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Honestly, that maybe that was the line because he's just so unlikely to win that he had to go for that anyway. Uh, but it makes no difference now as the game. The series is equalized one game apiece now. And the winner the of this series today. will go to the semifinals on Sunday.
So a pretty big deal. Tyler coming off the back of a win already today against Glory. And they're kind of mixing it up today because the players obviously play out their group in one day. So it means that these players will be playing more than once. Yep. In, in the past, they've obviously played twice over the course of a weekend. So, uh, you know, Tyler's already ran through one series. He's running the gauntlet now with Chansu. And if he gets the next win, then, you know, he kind of got hyped, you know, for, for Hearthstone towards the end of the season. And... He really wants to go to global finals, and if he just two owes his group and just sails through to the semis, then yep. he's going to be feeling pretty confident. He will indeed, and it's a, a different story as well for both of these players as to how they got there in terms of just their uh, their motivation, I suppose you could say. Chonsu has just been pretty clean sailing throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Very, very strong performances week after week, whereas Tyler, it feels like a, a, a redemption arc almost for him in his storyline in Grandmaster Season 2. He was, uh, I think, feeling somewhat uh, downtrodden or unable to find his motivation right. at the start of Grandmaster Season 2. Made some pretty big blunders. Of course, the uh, infamous Zephyrus just played out on curve for no effect, unsurprisingly, given that it was just in a Druid deck that runs lots of two obs. Uh, but then it feels like he's turned it around quite drastically. Right. He's playing more again. He's practicing with his buddies. He feels like he's enjoying Hearthstone again for the most part, which is when you see the very strong results from him and uh, gameplay like this. Yeah, and, and it, you know we'll see if it pays off. And again, it, if we'll have to wait till the weekend's over, of course, to see the results. But you know, if players like Tyler and other players who are involved there in the playoffs yeah, within that practice group, you know, have some good results, then you've got to just say, well, this is just the way to play Hearthstone going forward, isn't it? At least at this level. Let's get into it though. It's going to be a shame and mirror. Both players not going to be queuing up their Holy Wrath pile. They maybe just in fear of the mirror. But we'll see how it Possibly, goes. Yeah. I think if I had to choose which deck I like more in this matchup, I think I would side with Tyler in the token side. Okay. I think the fact that it can go really nice and aggressive right at the start of the game, especially with the soul of the Murloc that's now slotted in there, I feel like it is quite difficult actually for the quest shaman to keep up a lot of the time. Did find his own Mogu though. This is where things get a little bit more interesting. Did find his own hair though. Wow. This is where things get very interesting. Yes. <laughs> and honestly, I wouldn't even mind a double trade from Tyler. To play around the... What about double trade and then you set up the Spirit of the Frog? I'm definitely thinking Frog on this turn. I like Frog a lot. I'm just thinking like, why go wider than you need to go when you could just clear off the board, keep it relatively empty, and then go the turn after? Yeah, if you... Play Spirit of the Frog and don't trade, it does make his Mogu playable, even without the coin going into the next turn. And it plays around Sandstorm Elemental. Uh, but the thing is from Tyler, he knows that he has a Mogu. He doesn't know if his opponent does. Right. But he does end up going for it anyway. And I think I, he I like respects. Him. Yeah, I like him. I think it's probably correct because like you said, next turn, Desert Hair into Evolve is just insane it, it, anyway. It's an insane turn, so why give your opponent even a good turn, right? He could even fit in the Mogu as well. Oh, this is the turn that dreams are made of. This is what this deck was supposed to do. Trade and evolve. Yeah, chance you know coming. Disgusting. Disgusting. When your opponent floats one mana of shaman and they play some heads on the board. That is a bro You expect moment. this. Yeah. And the wins. Even draws. Oh. Akali to draw the other. It draws the other look. Mogu. Derek cannot even look right now. <laughs> this is filthy. Tyler, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> wow. There is Mogu, there is Sandstorm, and yes. there's also a Concede button as well. <laughs> um, available for Chansu if he so desires. It's incredible though, this is the power level we're messing with right now in Hearthstone. And it may feel like, you know, oh, Tyler was just able to cheese the game. This is what the deck does. This is game plans A through, uh, I was going to say A through B there for a second. <laughs> I was like, that's not very many at all. You uh, don't need many, that's A why. through Y, we'll go with. I was going to say Q. <laughs> that feels like a good point as well. Or 10. <laughs> yeah, this is <laughs> game plans A through 10 <laughs> here in uh, Mogu cheesing. And I think my thoughts pretty much echo Chonsu's here. What do you do? Especially as if he kills off the Reaper there as well. It just summons the Mogu from his hand. It's an 8 9. Four. Yeah. So there's 20, potentially 20. 
one damage if he rolled spell do uh, damage totem. Okay. There's also just, would you ever, like, trade, 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 go face, evolve again? I'm looking at it. Or is that too risky in the fact that the game's not going fast enough if you max trade? I just don't think you lose. Like, even if they have... MCT coin MCT. Well, what about I think you're still MCT in into the Akali, into trade, positive trade, into pulling Mogu into trade? I, I think. Maybe, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I, I think I'm being extreme. I'm, I'm being extreme. But I think that Tyler probably doesn't want this Akali to stay on the board now right. that it's done its job. Because it is a way That's fair. in which Tyler could lose. And also bear in mind, the 4 7 will heal Chansu if it dies. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I like it. Oh, lightning bolt for a million Ooh. damage. Does fall an Aviana though? Yeah. He can play Shadow Walk! To, to do what? I don't know, something! <laughs> Your zero mana Shadow Walk versus Tytler's ultimate god board. This happened to me the other day, and my opponent played Malagos Swipe Swipe, oh, really? and unsurprisingly, I lost the game. Oh, even the Malagos for the upgraded blue and spell damage lightning bolt. So I mean, it's lightning bolt in for eight. Tyler's like, wait a minute, what did he play? <laughs> you don't start counting battle cries on turn five. When was the last time you saw Shadowhawk questing explorer that draws a card? What a world we live in. Never. Never. I don't think Literally I've ever seen that never before. Never seen it. Yeah. Rush Lackey makes no difference. It's an impressive end there, or an exciting explosive end. Can he? But I don't think Chonsu has a way out here. Can he sludge into spell into something? Plague of Murloc? Into, I don't know, all one attack Murlocs? Can he... Little time. Ah, yeah, I don't know, just w without the I think quest, that's the, that's without like the quest the only active. Out. That has to be the only out, I think. Or does this mean there's not lethal on board? Okay, fair enough. I think this actually stops lethal on board with the sandstorm. Okay, this is much more likely to win the game. Well, let's get simple pretty quick. Oh, can Tyler lose? Impossible. If Chonsu there, can pull 15, this game back, there's 15 damage. Game of the century. In hand. Okay, uh, sorry, on board. Less yeah. now. But does does Bloodlust get him there? Yeah, he's not going to mana. Yeah. Okay. I can't believe we're casting a turn. <laughs> I thought last turn that was going to be the last one of this game. But fair play to Chonsu. He found he found a way to survive. So, bounce the sandstorm. No, that doesn't do it. He has to get what double Titanic or double Titanic double frost right? shock off of a. He can't even cast that. Yeah. Oh. If he gets a frost shock here, is that enough? Ah, he needed no. Titanic. I think he literally needed two Titanic lackeys. You double taunt and yeah. then you trade off the two to into the two one, and just go face and hope that there's no way to remove him. Tyler though. Oh. Sigh of relief as there was a moment, honestly, although we could see that yeah. crazy things would have to happen. The second your opponent plays a turn five shadow up for zero mana, you have to consider life and <laughs> what's going on. But Tyler going just 2-0 in his matches in, in pretty decent fashion, taking down Chonsu and Glory means he is going to be in the semi-finals on Sunday. So a really, really solid win for him. He's got to be... As you can see, he got up and left. He's almost certainly going to be telling everyone who's in Fino's yeah. house with him that he just got through because obviously we are on a delay as well. But that's the end of that match. Uh, we're going to be sorting out what will be the next match coming up for you guys. It should be Alutimu versus Glory. Uh, Glory is coming up next. We're going to go to break, make sure the players are ready. We'll be right back with some more Grandmasters.